Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me for today's video which is really close to my heart and something that I've struggled with for a really long time. If you've never met somebody who wakes up thinking about cake and goes to bed thinking about cake, well then I'm your gal. In this video, I want to share with you 15 foolproof ways that you can help yourself to start beating those sugar cravings. Now, I'm not using the word sugar addiction in this video because I feel like when we start using the word addiction, we go down a totally different road where if you slip up and you eat the full chocolate bar, you're just gonna say, well, I'm addicted to sugar anyway, so what's the point in continuing to try? The messages that we tell ourselves and the terminology that we use are really important in battling certain things in our lives because we don't want a sugar addiction to become that self-fulfilling prophecy. So before we go any further in this video, I want you to ask yourself, why do you crave it? And what time of day is it that you crave it? So for me, it's always around 3 p.m. when I'm kind of feeling that midday slump and I'm a little bit tired and maybe I want a pick me up. And it's always in the evening time when I'm sitting down to watch television. And that for me is a pure habit. I don't need any sugar at that time of night, but it is a habit. Is it because you're restricting yourself too much to the point that when you want to eat sugar, you're eating way too much of it. So there are a number of different reasons as to why you might be craving sugar. So try and get to the root cause of that and then try and implement a couple of these tips that I'm going to give you right now. And also everybody, if you do enjoy this video and you want to see more videos like this, please don't forget to hit subscribe and also please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It really supports my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So number one is to eat a diet high in low GI foods. So that means that you're trying to avoid refined and processed carbohydrates. So things like white breads and white pastas and you're opting for the brown and the wholemeal varieties of those foods. And the reason this is because those foods are what's called low GI or low glycemic index which means they release sugar into your blood a lot more slowly than a refined white product would. So although the carb quantities are very similar, the brown pasta is going to allow you to not feel crashed and not be craving more sugar an hour after you've eaten your big bowl of pasta, which I'm all for by the way. Another fantastic low GI food that I absolutely love to implement into my diet are oats. I eat them every single morning for breakfast without fail. That is going to set you up for a positive day, give you slow release energy to allow you to last until lunchtime. So eating low GI foods leads nicely into eating whole fruits as your source of sugar and as your snacks throughout the day. By eating whole fruits, you're getting your micronutrients and you're getting a good source of sugar that your body can digest naturally and easily and that's going to give you that natural boost of energy, which of course we're all about on this channel. So instead of opting for a 250 ml glass of orange juice in the morning, try and eat a whole orange and see how that makes you feel. And this actually leads to my third point, which is to avoid fruit drinks altogether. You wouldn't sit there and you wouldn't eat 14 oranges in one sitting. So why would you drink 14 oranges? Even if it says low sugar on the box, you can be guaranteed it is not low sugar. The teaspoons of sugar, if you actually took it out of the juice and looked at it in front of your eyes, would be absolutely shocking. So my suggestion then, if you are a lover of fruit juices or carbonated fizzy drinks, would be to try something like a kombucha. Kombucha is fermented tea and it has so many benefits for gut health. And they are fizzy as well. So if you are craving that fizzy hit, then kombucha is a healthy alternative to that. So my tip number four then is to always have a healthy alternative on hand. For me, I absolutely love to make energy bites. They regularly make an appearance on my channel in some way, shape or form. I will leave a link to that video above me in a card if you want to check it out. I also really like to make my own flapjacks to cover nuts in dark chocolate and to make healthy alternatives from fruit. So for example, I actually do have a recipe for some healthy banana muffins that are so good you would think that they are made from refined sugar and they contain zero sugar. So if you want Want to see that please let me know in the comment section down below as a healthy snack idea but by having healthy alternatives on hand it means that you can set yourself up for success if your family are eating chocolate you have an alternative that you know is tasty good for you and you'll even find that you might like them even more than you like that chocolate bar so as part of always having healthy alternatives on hand, my fifth tip to beat those sugar cravings is to use baking alternatives. So for example, you would substitute in a cup of unsweetened applesauce for sugar, or you would substitute in some overly ripe brown looking bananas that don't look like they're good for anything anymore, but they're absolutely incredible in baking. So if you do love to bake like I do, 
that is a simple way that you can reduce the amount of sugar in your bakes so you can still actually enjoy your sweet treats but without that massive sugar quantity. If you are here as part of a weight loss journey or in an effort to just generally improve your overall health, my advice would be to stay away from diet products. When manufacturers are reducing the fat quantity in a product, they actually end up hiking up the sugars. Have a look at the diet or low fat version versus the full fat version and I guarantee you the sugar quantity will be a ton higher. So although it's counterintuitive, they want you to think that you are being more healthy when in actuality you could be doing more damage to yourself and increasing the amount of cravings that you will be having. But my next tip is to actually avoid foods that are in a package as much as you possibly can. So this is not only spoken from a zero waste perspective, but it's actually spoken from the perspective that Generally, the rule of thumb is the more processed the product, the more sugar and bad additives and things that our body does not like, it contains. Try and cook as much as you possibly can at home. And even if you can't do that every day, pick a day of the week where you say, I'm going to meal prep all my meals today and I'm going to spend the first part of Sunday morning cooking and setting myself up for success during the week. My next tip is probably one of the most important and one that a lot of people struggle with, including myself on occasion, and that is that they can be guilty of skipping meals. This, however, is detrimental if you do suffer from sugar cravings, because if you skip meals, your blood sugar is totally out of whack. And the second you get yourself back in the vicinity of food, guess what you're going to do? You're going to go to your stash of chocolate and you're going to munch on it because you are starving. What we want to do is eat regular meals throughout the day, small and often, so that our blood sugar maintains a consistent level so again my suggestion would be to eat regularly and also eat a balanced meal when you do eat so try and get some protein fats and carbs with every meal and I promise you that will sustain you for a lot longer than it would if you pick up that chocolate bar and it's gone in 30 seconds my next tip is the one I'm sure you've been waiting to hear and that is please do not deprive yourself if you want to have a little piece then please do have a little piece don't deprive yourself because that is going to lead you into a whole other cycle of serious issues with binge eating potentially. For me, I always have dark chocolate in the house and I allow myself to have a piece of dark chocolate or even if it's milk chocolate, I allow myself to have that piece and then to close the press and my craving is satisfied. It's like anything in life. The more you can't have it, the more you want it. So if you're somebody who really loves to have sugar on tea or coffee, like Danny is, I'm trying to get him to do this. My suggestion would be to actually switch out to a sweeter alternative to dairy, like coconut milk, which is absolutely amazing on coffee. Not so much on tea, but definitely on coffee as a creamer. You'll find that you don't need as many spoonfuls of sugar in your coffee to give you that sweetness that you really like from it. My next tip is one that you probably don't want to hear, and that is remove temptation from the house. If you feel like you are out of control and you can't stop yourself physically from going to the press to pick up those muffins, you simply need to remove them from the house. Now, I have had to do this, but I've had to do it with other foods, particularly peanut butter and nuts. I absolutely love them. Like, it's crazy. I love nuts. Oh my God, I love nuts. But the sad reality is that if you can't control yourself, then you are going to give in to temptation. But if the temptation isn't there, you can't give in to it. I think that there is no magic cure for self-control. It is something that you need to learn over time. Discipline is an acquired skill. People have to work at it every single day. And until you're disciplined enough to have that packet of cupcakes in the cupboard, they need to not be there. Simple fact, reality, let's move on. Another tip that has been particularly important in my life as I've gone through college and kind of done X, Y, and Z exam has been to manage stress. When stress gets a hold of your body, it wreaks havoc on your sugar cravings and on your cravings for food in general. I know that when I am stressed, I emotionally eat. I eat my savings. The first thing I do is go to the fridge. I'll stand there for five minutes, opening the fridge door, closing the fridge door, opening the fridge door, closing the fridge door, before deciding that I'm just gonna eat the chocolate anyway. But creating coping strategies to deal with the stress that you're feeling is a much better route than just allowing yourself to give in to those cravings to feel that 10 second feel good. So as part of your stress management, you could incorporate a small bit of exercise into your routine maybe, go out for a walk, get some fresh air, go out and meet a friend and just do something productive. But not only is it gonna help you manage your stress, it's gonna actually make you feel less likely to want to eat those sugary things because essentially you're just going to undo all that amazing work that you've just done. My next tip that is so instrumental to every aspect of good health is to make sure you're getting good sleep. And that doesn't necessarily mean getting your eight hours in every night because realistically that's not gonna always happen. It just means putting your phone away at a reasonable hour, allowing your body to wind down properly so that you get quality sleep. 
Not only is that when your liver does its best work to detoxify the body, but it's also going to help you manage two hormones that are really at play here. Essentially, leptin is the satiety or satiety hormone and ghrelin is the hunger hormone. So when you're tired, there is a decrease in the hormone leptin, which tells you that you're full, and there is an increase in the hormone ghrelin, which tells you that you're hungry. So it is a complete slippery slope, so really focus on enough sleep that's gonna help you to balance out all those hormones and make sure that you're not craving that sugar. My next tip is to make sure that you are hydrated enough. This is a mantra that is repeatedly spewed out, but there is good reason behind it. Dehydration and hunger are really inherently linked. If you think you're hungry, you might actually just be thirsty. What I really like to do, if you do have that sweet craving, is to just add a couple of slices of your favorite fresh fruit into your water, just to give you that sweet release. So in here, I actually have some oranges, and I'm literally just sitting here with a straw, which is zero waste by the way, everybody. I'm literally just poking at the full orange segment and it's releasing some lovely sweet orange juice into the water. So not only is this going to satisfy your sweet tooth, but it's going to encourage you to drink more water as well because it tastes good. One of the biggest things that I see people doing, whether it's friends or family, is actually rewarding themselves with a sugary treat after they've done something good. Now, I absolutely love to celebrate with food as well, and I don't mean the special occasions. I really mean just on a normal day-to-day -day basis. I had a hard day today, so I'm going to reward myself with a chocolate bar. That's the kind of mentality we need to be kicking in the backside and getting rid of. Find another way to reward yourself that isn't food. And my last tip that has been incredibly, incredibly helpful for me has been to actually talk it out with somebody. So if I feel like I'm having a really bad day where I want to eat everything and I'm really craving sugary things, I will say it to my mom or I'll say it to Danny and I'll just say, look, I am out of control today. Can you please just talk me through this? And generally by the end of talking through what the issue is and why I'm craving something, the craving has gone away and I don't actually want to eat it anymore. Or if I still do want to eat it, they can say, look Sinead, you've had X, Y, and Z today. I really don't think you should eat that. You are not gonna feel good about yourself after you do that. And usually that's encouraging me to have some fresh berries or frozen berries with some Greek yogurt, something that's gonna satiate me, but not spike my blood sugar up so that I end up on that downward spiral of more and more sugar. All right, everybody, so that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you learned a little something that could be helpful to you in this battle we're raging against sugar. If you have any of your own tips for battling sugar, please don't forget to leave them in the comment section below so that we can all learn from each other, all help each other. And of course, if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And also, please don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that you get notified every single time I post a new video. And I really look forward to seeing your face back on my channel again. Bye.